This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Two years ago, EV startups were all the rage on Wall Street. Today is a different story. Lordstown Motors just filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and it's hoping someone will buy the company. But it also filed a lawsuit against Foxconn, accusing it of breach of contract. It claims Foxconn is refusing to purchase additional shares in the EV maker that it promised to and that it misled the company about collaborating on vehicle development. The two companies signed a $170 million investment deal, but so far Foxconn has only handed over $52 million. Foxconn says Lordstown breached their agreement when its shares fell below a dollar and that's why it's withholding the rest of the investment. This will be an interesting court case, but it looks like the end of the road for Lordstown Motors. Last year, Ford Credit, the in-house finance arm of the Ford Motor Company, made a $2.6 billion profit. GM Finance made a $3.8 billion profit. In-house finance companies, or what they call FinCos, can make a lot of money which is why Morgan Stanley says that Tesla should start its own Finco. Up until now, many Tesla customers have paid in cash. But if Tesla wants to ramp up to its ultimate goal of selling 20 million vehicles a year, it's going to have to go after customers who need to finance a vehicle with monthly payments. Morgan Stanley says Tesla has the cash flow to start its own Finco, and could make a lot of money by offering finance to those customers. Legacy automakers better get rid of their legacy mindset or they're going to get clobbered by the best Chinese EV startups. That's according to Alex Partners, which says legacy automakers are too engineering driven instead of being customer focused and they're slow to catch on to the things that their customers really care about. For example, traditional car companies will delay a program to perfect ride and handling and NVH, which is important, but it isn't as important to customers as consumer electronic technologies and driver assistance features. Alex Partner says the traditional approach to product development and sourcing has led to inflexible and slow product launches. Worse still, it says legacy automakers are asking traditional teams to develop software-defined vehicles who have little experience doing that. Alex Partner says the legacies better radically change their business model or they're not going to be ready for Chinese-style competition. Automotive News released its annual rankings of the top automotive suppliers in the world, and Bosch is once again number one, with over $50 billion in global revenue in 2022. It's followed by Denso, ZF, and Magna. And thanks to the growth in electric vehicles, Chinese battery maker CATL made the top 10 list for the first time, coming in at number five. It made about $33 billion in 2022, which is more than double the year before. And rounding out the top 10 is Hyundai Mobis, Asin, Forvia, Continental, and Lear, which is the highest ranked American company. It made just under $21 billion last year. Toyota revealed the all-new, next-gen version of the CHR. Styling of the small crossover is still fairly radical, especially the rear-end treatment. But the front-end design is much more similar to other new Toyota models like the BZ4X and the Prius. It's also available with a two-tone paint job that accentuates the rear-end, as well as Toyota's first flush-mounted door handles. Interior highlights include available dual 12.3-inch digital displays, and we like how the dashboard wraps across the door panels, which draws your eye to the round air vents just below the A-pillars. The new CHR is only offered as a hybrid. 
There's a 1.8 liter and a 2 liter hybrid available and a 2 liter plug-in hybrid option. Toyota didn't provide much info about the setups, but it says the hybrid 2 liter will be offered with all wheel drive and the 2 liter PHEV will automatically switch to EV only mode when it enters a low emission zone. Toyota says the new CHR was designed and developed for Europe and will be built exclusively in Europe. So right now, we don't know if other markets like the US will get the new second gen version. The chip shortage is easing up, but it's still hurting production. Auto Forecast Solutions says automakers have lost 312,000 units of production this year and the total impacted volume for 2023 could hit 2.4 million vehicles. And since January of 2021, automakers have lost over 8.8 .8 million vehicles in production globally due to the chip shortage. The biggest shortfall is in North America, which has lost almost as much vehicle production as Europe and China put together. Stellantis is creating an EV charging ecosystem that will include home, commercial, and public charging units. It will be operated as a separate business unit under the Free to Move brand, and this new business unit will launch in the U.S. and the E.U. by the end of the year. Stellantis wants to bring together a large number of public charging outlets with its partners so a user can use any of them seamlessly with an app. But Stellantis also makes it sound like it will build its own public charging outlets, like the Jeep units that it has located at some off-road trails. Chevrolet revealed it's not going to offer a $40,000 version of the Silverado EV work truck, or WT, which was its original estimated base price. But Chevy joins Ford, who started selling the F-150 Lightning Pro at roughly $41,500, but it now sits at nearly $62,000. And Elon Musk recently indicated the base $40,000 version of the Cybertruck won't happen either. Tom Maloney, a recent AAH guest, reports on Inside EVs that Chevy says it will eventually come out with, quote, competitively priced versions that start at fifty grand which means with incentives, it could push the price back into the $40,000 range. However, the first versions of the Silverado EVWT to launch will be priced much higher. Already in production is a version with a bigger battery pack that offers up to 450 miles of range, which starts at roughly 80 grand. And another version will follow not long after that with a smaller battery pack that knocks $5,000 off the price. Right now, it looks like the commercial versions of the Lightning and Silverado EV are priced pretty well against each other. The Chevy has a big range advantage, but the Ford has it easily bested in payload. Now, if you want to talk about Rivian, it doesn't offer a commercial version of the R1T. But if you wanted to compare, it starts at $73,000. Certain versions offer more towing capacity than both, about the same payload as the Chevy, but the Chevy beats it in range. Former Audi CEO Rupert Stadler was just sentenced and fined for his role in the Volkswagen Group's diesel cheating scandal. A German court handed him a suspended sentence of one year and nine months and fined him $1.2 million. He's the first former VW Group board member to be sentenced for the scheme. Stadler originally denied the allegations but later confessed in order to avoid going to jail. When it comes to selling heavy-duty pickups, bigger is better. And if you've got the biggest numbers, you brag all about it. And Ford wanted to make sure the media didn't miss the fact that its super-duty trucks have the highest payload and towing capacity. So they put giant numbers on display when it showed off the new trucks to the media. It loaded up 8,000 pounds of concrete in the back of an F-350, and it hitched a 40,000-pound trailer to the back of an F-450. Journalists could then drive the trucks up and down steep hills at Ford's Proving Grounds to experience it for themselves. And while the trucks handled the loads, you're really aware that you're hauling a heavy load. 
Volkswagen teased a concept version of an all-electric Beetle that will be featured in an upcoming kids movie, which had us wondering if it had something in the works. But VW brand CEO Thomas Schaefer says the Beetle won't be making a comeback because Volkswagen doesn't think it makes sense to bring it back. And Schaefer also threw cold water on the Scirocco, saying it had its day in the sun. Performance station wagon fans will be happy to hear that BMW is bringing back a touring version of the 7th generation M5. It hasn't had one since the 4th gen launched in 2007. The new M5 Touring will feature a new powertrain that it says is partially electrified, but it didn't give any technical stats. Both the sedan and station wagon versions are undergoing tests right now and should be out next year. And a programming note here, AutoLine will shut down next week for our summer break, so there won't be any AutoLine dailies or an after hours. But we'll resume our normal schedule on the 10th of July. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data.